And so interestingly, there was no significant difference to body composition between using HIT and a lesser intensity, more continuous cardio style, according to this meta-analysis. High intensity interval exercise seems to be a powerful training program for improving cardiorespiratory fitness and cardiovascular health. Moderate intensity continuous training showed to be more efficient in improving long-term glucose metabolism. And so welcome to the exercise science playlist. I've pretty much covered the entire spectrum of exercise science concepts on this channel. And so my goal with this channel now is to communicate videos when there's new research out, in particular meta-analysis, which is the highest form of evidence base. But I will also be including high quality individual research papers as well. And my presentation style with this playlist is very purposefully now to make it as simple and as digestible as possible. But I find that overcomplicating issues can actually make something hard to apply to practical training. Effectiveness of HIIE versus MICT in improving cardiometabolic risk factors in health and disease, a meta-analysis published in Medicine and Science in Sport and Exercise, March 2021. So as I've discussed on this channel before, in relation to the goal of fat loss, HIT and MICT both have benefits and disadvantages to them. And it very much depends on you and your needs of how you apply them. And sh don't tell anyone, you can actually use both. High intensity interval training burns a large amount of calories in a short amount of time. It can be highly time efficient. It's an absolutely great tool to use. But with anything high intensity, you have to think about fatigue and recovery time. And then we have MICT, where of course there are many benefits. But in addition, some people may just enjoy a slightly lower intensity, more continuous continuous style of cardio training. Also, you can think about intangible benefits. Some people may find it therapeutic in a way, if you like. Those intangible factors, that thinking time. I certainly enjoy MICT because it gives me time to think about things, not just in training, but other aspects also. But importantly, cardiovascular training is more than just fat loss. What about other vital health markers? And so we're gonna to touch on issues such as glucose metabolism and VO2 max in this video. And my persuasion is that all we have is our health. Our health is so important. And so meta-analysis is the highest form of evidence we have, where it will take many pieces of research, filter through them, find high quality information and communicate it to the audience. And importantly, it doesn't tell us what to do. Exercise science is a guide that you must apply to your individual needs and characteristics. The present meta-analysis is the first to comprehensively combine and analyze the effectiveness in the effects associated with HIT and MICT on seven clinical endpoint domains related to cardiometabolic health. And so HIT was better than MICT when it came to improving VO2 max, which is your oxygen uptake, essentially the maximum amount of oxygen you can uptake when performing exercise. We all wanna be Kante basically. And this isn't just a health marker per se, it's also vital for performance. If you are someone who is performance oriented in your training, perhaps you participate in a sport or, or some type of activity related to performance, you may therefore want to think about using HIT as a really primary form of your cardio because of course the relationship between oxygen and energy. And this is why we use the term conditioning a lot with the application of HIT. But in addition, there were some novel findings in this piece of research in related to HIT and age. In other words, HIIE showed a higher effect over MICT for older participants in improving VO2 max. The next health marker, endothelial function. FMD adaptation to exercise training showed in general higher effects with the HIT than with MICT. And so what does this relate to? Well, essentially very simply vasodilation and therefore oxygen delivery throughout the body. And when you look at this research, this is attributed to HIIT training being more stressful and therefore promoting an increased nitric oxide release. Nitric oxide, of course, related to the dilation of your arteries. And so in my last video, I showed a supplement and they had a nitric oxide component to help to achieve this effect. And so very interestingly, you may now look at this piece of research and say, well, actually, there's this idea of exercise over buying supplements because you can use HIIT and you can increase this wanted benefit. The next health marker body composition, perhaps the go-to area that most people are interested in when comparing these different cardiovascular protocols. And so interestingly, there was no significant difference to body composition 
between using HIT and a lesser intensity, more continuous cardio style, according to this meta-analysis. Now, I understand that that may be controversial for some people because HIT training is commonly projected as being superior for fat loss, for example. And HIT is highly effective for fat loss, highly effective for changing body composition. But if we look at this meta-analysis, it isn't distinctly and uniquely better than MICT. It would come down to the idea of the context of how you're using your cardio with your resistance training, with your nutrition, with a caloric deficit, for example, if your goal is fat loss. And so I am aware that Dr. Brad Schoenfeld has just released a meta-analysis on this very issue within the last few days. Now, I haven't read it yet, but I am aware of, of one of the conclusions that he also found in his meta-analysis, no difference between using HIT and, and MICT when it comes to body composition. And so when it comes to using these different cardio protocols for fat loss and body composition, for example, there is a high level of personal preference. You can use HIT, you can use more MICT type style. We can go absolutely mental and non-tribal and use both. Despite that the effects of HIIE on reducing body fat are known, our results show that HIIE may be as effective as MICT in reducing body fat both in longer exercise training interventions and in individuals with high BMI. In addition, a recent meta-analysis showed that low volume HIIE was not more efficient than MICT in reducing body mass and body fat in normal weight and overweight obese individuals. Altogether, our results highlight that, in general, HIIE and MICT likely induce similar effects on body composition and a nutritional intervention should be accompanied. Only a few more to go, blood pressure. Now, what I like about this section is the communication that exercise can be an important intervention rather than going straight for the medicine, straight for the pharmaceuticals, of the importance of exercise literally being a form of medicine. HIIE showed greater effect sizes in middle-aged subgroup in reducing diastolic blood pressure as well as in participants with a higher initial baseline. Otherwise, no evidence evidence for different effects between training interventions was found, as already indicated in another meta-analysis. And so then we come to blood lipids, the importance of cardiovascular exercise, again, for reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease. And there were no significant differences between the two protocols for this purpose. Inflammation. Our analysis indicated increased effect sizes favoring MICT in the healthy and young population, as well as when SIT, sprint training, as opposed to HIT training per se, was performed. Last one, almost there, insulin and glucose metabolism. Essentially, that means how is your body able to use the sugars, the carbohydrates that you're putting into it? Structured exercise training programs have already been shown to improve insulin and glucose metabolism. Overall, not many differences between HIT and MICT were observed in the improvements in fasting insulin and fasting glucose. On the other side, MICT showed superior improvements in long-term glycemic control, a precursor of type 2 diabetes. And to follow that up, a very interesting statement. Finally, it seems that individualized exercise training programs with the goal of health promoting might take an advantage in combining HIIE and MICT. A recent study investigated the improvements and rate of responders in individuals that performed a mix of HIIE and MICT in their exercise training for 13 weeks. The authors found all the participants in that group to be responders to the increase in VO2 max as well as to improve cardiometabolic health. We can use both protocols and there's a large aspect of individual programming, something I say that runs throughout my whole channel. I'm James Linker. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.